And let's now take a more calm and measured approach towards the derived category. So uh, let's suppose somebody starts by uh, giving you an abelian category. Um, then we can consider the Cochin complexes, maybe bounded of some type, the star representing that um, in A. And um, one can proceed um, to uh, invert quasi-isomorphisms and go directly to the derived category. But instead, one could do an intermediate category um, called the homotopy category, which we'll write with a K, and then go from K to DA. The, um, the advantage in doing this is um, that, first off, the, the passage from here to there is straightforward to describe. We have a lot of control over what the uh, morphisms in this, uh, in this category look like, and moreover, a lot of important um, structure um, that we would like in the derived category is already apparent in the uh, category, this homotopy category. Um, for example, this is uh, not only an additive, but in fact a triangulated category already. And so passing from here to there is just going from one triangulated category to another. Um, Moreover, um, this, um, while is still, this is still a process of localization, is a much more well-behaved localization process. This, it turns out that the quasi-isomorphisms viewed as morphisms in here form what's called a localizing set of morphisms. And so this um, localization is much more easily described. So for this reason, we're going to first start by talking about uh, this homotopy category, and then eventually um, make our way to the derived category from there. So to define the homotopy category, well, we are going to start actually not with an abelian category necessarily, but just with an additive category. So starting with an additive category, as before, we can construct the category of cochain complexes. And in the category of cochain complexes, we can describe the, uh, um, the property of, uh, of maps between chain complexes being homotopic. So if I have a chain complex, uh, a n, a cochain complex, excuse me, like so, and another one, so, um, and if I have a couple of uh, chain maps between them, so maybe some F and G, F and G, et cetera, then I can describe this thing called a, uh, a homotopy, and that is simply a collection of maps that go like this. So we'll call them like this would be HN, HN plus one, et cetera. So that is to say, a chain homotopy Um, H from F to G is given by a collection of, of maps Hn from the um, An to the Bn minus 1 um, such that, I'll put it up here, um, such that if you look at um, dH plus Hd, then that's equal to um, G minus F. So to say that two maps are um, chain homotopic means that I can find an H such that the DH plus HD is the difference of the two maps. Okay, so if you have such a thing, um, then that defines an equivalence relation. So this gives an equivalence relation. On, uh, on the morphisms uh, between chain complexes. And HOM cochain A between two cochain complexes. 
And, um, and it's, of course, kind of straightforward to, to notice that this equivalence relation is just defined by what you're calling zero, right? We're saying that two things are equal, and if their difference is something that we're, we want to call zero, maybe we could call um, n inside of here the, the class of all the no, null homotopic um, uh, chain maps. So this could be the set of f such that f is homotopic to zero. And you can see this equivalence relation is just taking this and modding up by n. And in fact, we can use that, it turns out, to define uh, the homotopy category. So definition. The uh, homotopy category um, of A has objects, well, the same as everything else, the cochains in A, and the morphism sets um, are given by, well, hom in the homotopy category between two complexes is hom in the cochains. modulo those that are null homotopic. So it's just the equivalence, um, it's just the equivalence classes um, um, in here. And we've done it. That's the, uh, that's the homotopy category. Of course, you need to check that, um, that this operation is, um, is well-defined in terms of um, composition of morphisms. It's essentially the observation that, that this n acts like an ideal, you know, kind of um, absorbs both in pre- and post-composition. And, um, and yeah, so that is the homotopy category. Of course, the interesting thing now is to see that this um, sits in between the cochains and the derived category, and that it has a triangulated structure. Let's now describe the triangulated structure on the homotopy category. So to do that, we need two ingredients. We need an additive autoequivalence, which is the translation, and we need a collection of distinguished triangles. So the ship functor is actually going to be inherited from complexes. Um, so recall that if A is a coaching complex, um, one defines A shifted by one, to be the new Cochin complex, which in degree n looks like the old one in degree um, n plus one. Oops, excuse me, these are superscripts, these are Cochins, right? n plus one. And, um, and then the uh, boundary map is negative of the old one. So you shifted one, and all the boundary maps get negatized. Um, so that's the uh, shift, and so the, um, the translation functor, if you will, is just going to be the shift one. Okay, that's an additive autoequivalence. And then we need a set of distinguished triangles. So um, recall here that uh, script A is just assumed to be an additive category. We don't have a notion of an exact sequence, but we do have a notion of a split exact sequence. So, um, you know, just one where the center term is a, is a direct sum. So, um, and then therefore in particular, if we have a, um, uh, in a if we have um, some maps between um, complexes, we'll say that this is a termwise uh, split exact sequence. If um, at every degree, if you put a little n up here, these things are split exact sequences. So the thing in the middle is just the direct sum of the two. Now, in this case, um, one can define a section map going back like this. Let me label these things f and g. You can uh, define non-uniquely a section map. And this is not actually, let me call it s. Note that s is not necessarily a, um, a chain map. If it was, then that would be the assumption that you know S commutes with the with the boundary maps, and that this is a split exact sequence of chain complexes. We're not actually assuming that. We're just going to assume that term by term it's a split exact sequence. 
Now, in this case, um, if you have one of these, you can define a map from C uh, to, the, to the shift of A as follows. Um, you just uh, look at, um, you take, um, you know, C goes to, um, you do the, um, the uh, DS, am I going to get the sign right? Let me just double check. Uh, yeah, DS minus SD of C. And what you see is that, um, you know, this goes to something um, in here uh, in degree one higher, such that if you do G to it, you get zero, and so therefore it lives in A. So this actually lives inside of A, but it's one degree higher, right? And then, so given a split exact sequence, you actually get um, from that uh, maps A, B, C, um, A of 1. And um, one defines a distinguished triangle in the homotopy category to be one um, of this form coming from a termwise split exact sequence. Okay, and that's it. So now let's take a brief aside and take a look at the axiom TR3 um, and see why the homotopy category satisfies TR3, or at least give a, give a sketch of the idea. So for TR3, one starts with an arbitrary morphism of co-chain complexes, and you want to know that in the homotopy category, you can extend this or make it part of a, um, of a distinguished triangle. So it should go A, B, something, uh, and then A shifted by 1, that should be a distinguished triangle. So to do this, um, one introduces a couple of other objects, namely the cylinder and the cone, uh, excuse me, cylinder of F and the cone of F, mapping cone. And um, these uh, come with a uh, natural map. Uh, this goes to that. This admits a map from B, which turns out to be a chain homotopy equivalence. And so what then one does is one can consider the, um, the map from A to B really as corresponding from, as a map from A to the cylinder. And it will turn out that, um, that this map just kind of happens very uh, concretely by construction, is a uh, termwise split short exact sequence. This termwise split. And so what that tells us is um, that, um, that this, if you will, this thing on the bottom, identifying these two things together, is actually the first three things of a distinguished triangle of that shape uh, using, the, using that uh, construction or definition of what the distinguished triangles are. All right, so now that we've seen the homotopy category and seen that it's a triangulated category, let's point out um, one of its uh, deficiencies, which is that um, one thing that we want from the derived category, if one has a short exact sequence of, uh, of complexes, and now let me assume that A is actually an abelian category, so back to the original case under consideration. If you have a short exact sequence um, in, uh, of cochain complexes, then the standard machinery of homological algebra gives you these long exact sequences in cohomology, and these should correspond to distinguished triangles, and these triangles are what's supposed to give rise to these long exact sequences. So what we would like is to be able to somehow say that this thing actually, like some sort of meta TR3, should correspond to some distinguished triangle that looks something like this, maybe. And, um, and this doesn't work in the uh, homotopy category unless this thing is actually split exact, termwise split exact. In an arbitrary abelian category, though, you know, just because you're exact, you don't have to be split exact. And so 
what one uh, needs is something else, and that's what the derived category gives. So let me just now point out in this case that if you have a short exact sequence in an abelian category, the um, nice proposition is that um, if you consider, let's call this F, the analogous map between the, uh, to the cylinder and to the cone, then um, you have um, some natural arrows like this. So before I said that B maps to the cylinder, also the cylinder maps to B. Uh, it was a chain homotopy equivalence, and this is the inverse. Um, you get a, excuse me, you get a series of maps like this, and what you can show is that these vertical maps are in fact quasi-isomorphisms. Because they're quasi-isomorphisms, once you go to the derived category, you can identify this short exact sequence and this one, and therefore every short exact sequence of chain complexes corresponds to a, um, an exact triangle in the derived category.